Hi, this is Kirby. I'm in beautiful Wisconsin. And a question I get asked often is, can I put my node in my vehicle? The answer to that is yes, and it's relatively easy. If you're new here, please, 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 please hit that like and subscribe. I really, really appreciate it. There's nothing that thanks me more than when you do that. The, uh, the solution is very simple. Inside the the uh, Raspberry Pi, they have a Wi-Fi module in it. A lot of people don't realize that. You do have an Ethernet cable on the side, but you also do have a Wi-Fi card built into that Pi, and a lot of people don't realize that. Um, and that goes for the 3B, the 4, and up. It doesn't matter. Uh, people make tend to make this a little more complicated than it really is. It really is not that complicated. So I'm gonna show you a simple solution that my friend up here is using. And he actually had all the parts. So I said, let's go ahead and let's film this right now. Also stay to the end because I'm gonna list all the part numbers that is used in this project in the dis description. And also I'm gonna do a very quick tutorial I filmed right in front of my computer prior to coming out here to record this. So hopefully this will help somebody out make it easier and maybe somebody will help somebody else out and we'll get this going easier. Okay, so what we have here is a basic power supply, which I'm gonna list all these parts inside there. Um, this is, you know, you can buy these at Walmart. They're just basic jump, jump boxes. This one's a Vector um, and it's a V E Echo C Charlie 012 400 amp jump start system. Also right here is a wireless card. You can find these on eBay. You, pretty much a cellular provider will sell them. It just basically uh, turns a, it takes a SIM card in there and it turns it into like a little wireless hotspot, just like your modem is at your house. No real difference. This part right here is a very useful part. It's uh, basically the Raspberry Pi takes, in, takes uh, five volts on a three, it, three the Raspberry Pi 3B, uh, you need a 2.5 amp. And the Raspberry Pi 4, you need a three amp, but they still five volts. So that's kind of hard to find. So what this is, is basically it takes the 12 volts that comes from your car, and it steps it down to that five volts and goes into the Pi. These things are not very expensive. Uh, they're anywhere on, you can find them on Amazon for anywhere between five to $25, depending on how fast you want to come into your house. Um, so it's going in here, supplying the power. We got the cable going out to the card, the radio card. This is the arsenic card, no difference there. Um, so what you got to do is basically this is how it's running it's in the back of your car and you don't have to use this this is going to be a regular cigarette lighter but this gentleman here has a system he takes camping and he lights prefers this because he can walk in from the car walk into the house and it doesn't disconnect it's running the whole time it's it's just constantly running off of this so what you're going to do basically is you're going to go into the pi software and you're going to use the program called Putty, the SSH client, to get into there. If you got Windows, it's on gmrslive.com forward slash downloads. And you're going to go ahead and download Putty. And I'm going to show you at the end, like I said, all the settings that you have to do. But once you get in there, you're going to go to the wireless. It's going to pull up a big menu after your root and your password. And then it's gonna have a few options down. It's gonna ask for your Wi-Fi name. So also I wanna point out one other thing. There is no ethernet cable here, no ethernet. This is running 100% wireless. The wireless card that's built into this Pi at the bottom is talking to this right here. So you power on this, it's gonna give you a user, you know, just SSID and a password and from the SSH, you're gonna log in to the Pi. You do have to plug the course. I would recommend plugging the ethernet cable in when you're setting this up. And go ahead and um, access, put your root, your password in the big menu is gonna pop up. 
go to your WPA wireless setup option, which I'm, like I said, I'm gonna put at the end and just choose it. It's that simple. The other thing that a lot of people I have witnessed, I can't really explain it. I don't know why, but I will tell you this. A lot of people I always recommend use one for the house, one for the car, because some people plug this ethernet in. I haven't personally had this issue, but they'll plug this ethernet back in even and leave that wireless on there. And for some reason, they have problems with the connectivity on the, and, and it'll start reading from the ethernet, but for some reason, that wireless card just wants to keep trying to connect or something, I don't know what the deal is. So another thing is, if you do have this in a vehicle and you decide you wanna leave it as a node in your home, you might wanna go back in and go back into the wireless settings and delete the access point that's in there. You just basically go to the same thing I'm gonna show you at the end of this video. Um, and you just go in there and just, it'll have an option to null out the wireless card. Um, that did, I think they call it a WPA supplement file. And you just delete that file and it'll return to normal and you'll be able to just use your ethernet. Um, and like I said, you could use any of your portables. If you're using it inside a vehicle, always recommend low because why exactly do you need to go high? You know, keep your power on low. It'll last longer. You know, uh, you can run it to a mobile unit. You can put the mobile unit on the rooftop of the uh, car or vehicle and uh, be able to transmit. I mean, you, you got one watt right here for a transmission. So you can actually, we drove three miles off of this thing right here at his house. We were picking it up around three miles away off of one watt. So if you got a mobile unit that's kicking 25 watts, that's that's overshooting. You don't need it that high. Just go ahead and leave it, um, you know, leave it turned down as low as it possibly can. You don't need more than a watt. Even that's pushing it to get, you know, from here to there. Also, another point that my friend uh, also, he said that he did experience with this, which is true. You got to remember, everything runs on this 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. So... If you got a 2.4 gigahertz card, and well, I'll, I'll try to explain this as good as, as I can. You don't want it to be here. If your radio's here, I yeah, don't want it to be here because there will be the 2.4 radio wave, 2.4 radio card receiving, and 2.4 wireless SSID being transmitted out here. So you want to actually have it something like this. You don't want to get it too far because the length actually determines how fast that card's going to be able to transfer information to the Pi. So you kind of want to have it somewhere else, whether it be over here or whether it be wherever. You don't want to have this in the middle. It's all right to be here. It's all right to be here. Uh, but you don't want to get anywhere close there because you might get some harmonics or some humming or what have you. Well, I'm going to go ahead and run that video that I was telling you about. It's just really quick. I'm sure the people that have gotten to that uh, video will be able to uh, understand what's going on with it and how to get to it. Also, I'm uh, going to include all these parts down in the description. And this modem is A-L-C-A-T-E-L-L-T-L. I think it's the name. And like I said, this little thing here is the plus for rock. And it's a 15 watt DC to DC converter. It's part number PR. It's over here. I wrote it down. It's PR four A Alpha zero six zero. So it's P Papa R Romeo four A Alpha zero six zero. And we're going on to the video. gmrslive.com downloads and download putty next open putty get your ip address either by the reboot of the radio or through the port scanner app add an extra two on here to make it 222 and then click open as soon as the login comes in enter your username and your password 
you should present it to the screen after you put your username and password in. Come down to configure Wi-Fi interface networking. Enter in your Wi-Fi information and you're done.